Hey guys, it's Alyssa from AlyssaNalani.com and today I just wanted to share with you a project that I have just started working on. It is called a Crafty Commonplace Book and I'm a little late to this party but I have been really wanting to try it for a while now and I've just given it a whirl last night and oh my goodness, I am so completely smitten with this process. Now I got the idea from uh, Corey the Reset Girl, all her information is linked below. And she did a couple of videos of her Crafty Commonplace book. And I have watched those videos. Um, she has two of them, I believe. And I have watched them each no less than at least four or five times because I was just so intrigued with what she was doing. And I love her style and the way she places things and arranges things and, um, and what she uses. And so it was just a joy to watch anyway. <laughs> Or, and I really like just listening to her chat. And so um, I decided I was gonna go ahead and do it and, um, and see how it goes. Now, for those of you who don't know what a commonplace book is, essentially it is a book that is kind of like your own personal resource. It is a place where you curate ideas and, um, and words from anywhere. It could be a book, it could be podcasts, sermons, lectures, any place, and anything that you would highlight or take note of, you would put in here so that you can go back to this one place and have all of this information that you have um, purposely selected to use um, for future reference. Instead of just having highlights in a book, um, for those of us who write or highlight in, in our books, <laughs> instead of just that, where you have to go back to that book and, and find where that highlighted portion might be, um, where there's nothing wrong with that. I totally write and highlight in some of my books, and it's, it's great to have. But those really special parts, those really um, um, dynamic, maybe is a good word, um, words and, and passages that really caught you and made you sit up and pay attention, that's what you would put in here so that you can go to this place and have all of that information um, in one space. So that's my definition of a commonplace book. Other people explain it so much better than I do. And you can definitely look it up online and find out more information. Now what Corey did was she took the commonplace book and she decided to make it crafty because that's what she does and that's what her community does. And so not only just putting text in an in a resource that you build, but also making it pretty so that you enjoy reading and, and referring back to it. And my brain likes that. I really like um, engaging with spaces that not, are, not only are just pretty, but that I put together. So I thought, oh my goodness, I really wanted to try this out for myself. So, um, oh, also the other thing that triggered my desire to do this project was I am really trying to focus this month or this season, spring and summer, on building my routines. I am really bad at habits and routines, you guys, and I'm trying to nip this in the bud. So at the moment, I have picked up this book. Let me rephrase that. I picked up this book a while ago, and I am now just getting into it. It's called Manage Your Day Today, Build your routine, find your focus, and sharpen your creative mind. All three of these things I need in my life. And I am also, let me just pull this up so you can see. I'm also reading the book, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. All of this is linked below if you wanna check these out. And this is also a really good book as well. I'm talking about not just the fact that we need habits and routines in our life, but the power of triggers and how to um, use the triggers and things that we have in our life to form new habits, so on and so forth. So I really wanted a space where I can, especially for this book, because I'm actually reading it and, and marking in it, to take the highlights of this book and place them in my Crafty Commonplace book. I thought this would be a really great place to start. Okay. Prelude, prelude, done. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this. So what I'm planning on doing, um, well, first, let me tell you where I got this. This is an artist loft 
I don't know if the cameras can pick this up, but this is an artist loft sketchbook that I picked up at Michael's. It's relatively cheap. It is blank. It is um, stitched. <clears throat> I don't think it's glued. It's, it's the signatures are stitched. And the reason why I, I picked stitched, I did that on purpose, was because Corey mentioned, I don't know if it was her Crafty Commonplace book or another book she was working in, that her book was glued. And after a while, um, that glue was starting to uh, loosen because she was using watercolor. And I thought, well, if I wanted to use watercolor in the future, I don't want that to get in the way. Um, I didn't want to have to worry about my book coming apart. So I picked a stitched book just in case that is important to you as well. Um, the only thing that I'm not... It doesn't bother me, but I next time I will do better, is that this is blank. She had a grid paper uh, notebook, and now that I think about it, I really, I mean, I really love grid, and I would really have loved that, um, that um, feature in a book, because not only does it keep things straight and even, um, it also just is kind of a nice aesthetic. So anyway, but I'm not, I'm not complaining. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm gonna have a title page here, and then I have this, I put this, um, this is a Manby sticker, Manby sticks, I forgot what they call them, but me and my big ideas, same brand as the Happy Planner. It's a great big sticker that I have. And so it's kind of gonna act as the, I guess you would call that a fly leaf. <laughs> and then I have a few pages reserved for an index so I can, list out the different um, spreads that I do. And then this is my actual first spread. And this is a spread of the notes that I got from the forward and the preface. So here's the preface. And there were a couple of things that I took from there. And then the forward, I had some things that were underlined that I transferred onto these pages and see how like it's really simple like I didn't do anything spectacular I certainly don't have the stash that Corey does um, so I don't have as many things to work with but I just played with it and afterwards and after I put the um, the text down I was like oh my goodness I could really I could really get into this how many times have I said oh my goodness I sound like a teenager anyway that just occurred to me. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and prep a few more pages. I have gotten to the, I've gotten through the first, this book is, is built in articles. And um, so the first chapter is just, each chapter is a series of articles. So I'm in the first chapter and I've gotten through the first article. I'm in the second article. So I have quite a bit that I can copy down. And I won't have time to prep pages every day. So what I'd like to do is prep a few, um, a number of them, so that on the days where I can't prep pages, I can just go in and write down the text that I'm working with. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to prep some pages with you so you can kind of see how I put how I'm putting this together hopefully that'll spark it for you and then um, I'm gonna try and do the time-lapse where I fill in some pages with text so that you can kind of see it all come together and I'm totally copying off of Corey but um, she did encourage people to try this as well so this is my experiment this is what I'm trying and I am putting it on YouTube for you so <laughs> Anyway, we'll see how this goes. Um, all right, so I, like I said, I don't have a whole heck of a lot of ephemera and elements to work with. My stash consists mostly of washi and stickers. And that actually might work to my advantage because some of these pieces, <clears throat> this is thick scrap of paper that I punched out. So like when I make my inserts for my traveler's notebooks, I have all that extra 
um, paper because I, I cut them out of the 12 by 12s and so I have all that extra um, paper that's left over and so I just took all the scraps and I punched them out with this two inch round punch I got this at Michael's um, they go on sale every once in a while so and when they go on sale at least in my area they go at 40% off so wait until they go on sale and get you one they have all kinds of sizes, all kinds of designs, um, and I just picked out a circle punch. So, 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 let's see. I'm gonna pick out some designs that I like. I love this rose pattern that I had. This is really thick stock. Um, I did use these, and sometimes <laughs> I'd be like at the end of the, um, not at the end, or I would I would cut too close to the previous circle, and so I have this little scoop in there, but it doesn't matter because you can cover it up with another one. And I have this, this was music notes. I don't know if you can see that. I like those. I'm not going to spend too much time choosing because that will get to be a bit much. Um, so... It's funny because, I don't want those either. I was homeschooled uh, from a young age. And one of the things that my mother was very particular about, and I'm glad she was, was the fact that, you know, in the morning we had to get up, make our bed, get dressed, um, you know, eat breakfast, all of that morning stuff. And, um, you know, before we did schoolwork and people would ask us, like, do you guys do school in your pajamas? And my brother and I would always say, no, like our mom makes us get up and get ready for the morning and or for the day. And I'm really glad she did. And then as I got older, um, I don't have as much to choose from, y'all, that I thought. Anyway, as I got older, she was less strict on kind of staying on top of my stuff because as I got older I was able to kind of manage my day myself and so in that I kind of dropped some of those really good habits that she instilled in us uh, at no fault of her own that was totally me and so now while I have a sense of you know um, waking up in the morning and getting ready, like I know that's important. There are other habits that of self-discipline that I just, for some reason, don't have. And so I, I can be a royal procrastinator, and I carry that all through college. Um, certain, I need certain motivations to get me going. And I know I'm not, I'm kind of preaching to the choir because we all have those things that just we maybe need a little bit more of a push or um, I like those together we might need a little bit more of a push in the right direction to kind of get us going um, they're just things that we don't necessarily naturally do well I guess is what I'm trying to say and I am at a point in my life where I know what I want to do with my time I know what I need to do <laughs> with my time, but I do struggle with kind of staying on task and and um, using routines to my advantage, if that makes sense. So now I will say, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room here because when I got married, I had to kind of reinvent my days because I became a stay-at-home wife. I all of a sudden had all this time on my hands that I didn't have anymore. I was no longer working, I was no longer a student, so I just, I had to reinvent what it meant to, you know, what my day-to-day -day meant. But that was a year ago. <laughs> and you would think that I would have figured this out, but um, it, I think it's kind of one of those ever-changing things, and when you don't take the time to kind of sit down and say, okay, here's my life, here's what it consists of, now how am I going to approach it? Um, rather than what a lot of us, I think, often do 
is we uh, what am I trying to say we get caught up in what we are doing and we just let that carry us does that make sense so I say that because in the book managing your day-to-day -day, or manage your day-to-day um, it says that we are caught in reactionary workflow. This, I'm going to pause my little spiel here. These are sticker books. They're at Hobby Lobby. I have three of them now. Oh my goodness. These are so delicious. Um, I'm going to peel off this sticker because I can't see the designer's face. So each book is designed by a different person and there's a whole collection of them. And I have these three. I'm not sure where the, I don't know if they have like names, but this is Heidi Swap, this is Paige Evans, and this is Maggie Holmes. And I just, oh, so, so, so smitten with these, with these books. So I'm gonna use, these two I've had the longest. I just picked this one up yesterday in anticipation for this project. And um, these two I use, um, mainly right now in my traveler's notebooks and my planners so if you watched my May setup you'll see those stickers in there and then this one is the newest one and I am just I haven't even flipped through the whole thing I just knew I wanted it and it's got these gorgeous little butterflies and flowers oh, and there's little bunny rabbits oh that kind of matches I've got that um, I cannot remember what that pattern is called. It just left me. Okay. I don't want to bore you, you guys. I like these black and white roses. I'll try that. All right, what, would I, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so we tend to work in this reactionary workflow where we just react to everything or we just um you know we we take in all that's going on and we say okay i've got to do this i've got to do that and and um and just react and i don't want to do that <laughs> i really really don't want to do that and um i want to take this opportunity that i have where i can control my time because this is the season of life that i'm in and really take stock of the whys and hows of what I do. Is this gingham? Is that what that is? I know this is very like picnic tablecloth, but I think, I don't know why gingham just sprung up in my head. Anyway, sorry. Woo, squirrel. Um, but yeah, I just really want to take stock of, of the whys and hows of what I do and build my routines according to the needs of my life. And then develop habits that will, you know, set me up for success in my life. So that's, that's what I'm going for. That's what I'm working on. And, uh, no. <laughs> so that's what we're working on. Um, all right, I'm going to stop talking about that because I feel like I'm going to talk myself into a corner and not be able to get out and just start gluing and the great thing about this is y'all this does not take much thought at all and you can just take what you have in your stash no matter what you have in your stash see here I don't know if you can see this but there's the little cutout you know how when you buy scrap paper scrapbooking paper it has a little hole at the top where the pad may have hung on the display that's that little hole and it has a little um, dotted perforation line where you would cut it and I knew that I would probably just cover it up so I went ahead and made that circle and anyway I wonder if I want to put some of these in the center by golly I think I do Because as you can see, I did here. I thought it looked really good. Okay, like I said, this doesn't take much thought, and here I am probably overthinking this a bit. 
and you can use whatever you have in your stash, whatever scrapbooking um, paper you have, whatever scraps that you may have, because I know a lot of us keep scraps. Stickers, like I said, I only, I really only collect stickers and washi. That's what my stash is largely comprised of, stickers and washi. So I'm just gonna score that a little bit. And I'm actually going to cut this. And I embrace the fact that I'm totally copying what, what how Corey kind of builds her thing. Now she does kind of follow a process where she puts, you know, she groups things in kind of a certain way and she, um, tries to have different elements <clears throat> in different places on her spread. I don't quite do that, but I totally am doing the circles. I'm totally doing the cut your elements if you're placing them in the middle. And that's kind of the point. You watch somebody else's work and you uh, emulate their work as you find your own group. And there's nothing wrong with that. This is kind of how we find, oh, there was water on my stickers. Or, <laughs> water on my stickers. Water on my scissors. I kind of got my paper wet, but that's okay. That's paper, it will dry off. Anyway, so don't worry about like copying. Copying is, at least in this sense, is a good thing. And then you can just place things, paste them, and then your text will just kind of dance around your elements. And it's a beautiful thing. And String of glue. There's also something very therapeutic about writing things down, at least for me. I love writing things down. In school, I was, especially in college, because I had to, I was a good note taker. And even in high school, I was a good note taker. And that act of writing things down is really good for our brain. It helps us engage with the material better. And, um, and it's just, it's a good habit to have, is to write things down. And so when you're building a book or a resource of your own, um, having a space, if you're crafty, having a space that you like to look at as well is kind of like the icing on the cake. Oh, I love these flowers. Aren't these beautiful? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm, I'm one of those who kind of conserves things because I feel like I may not have it again, which at this stage of my life is not really, um, not really my reality anymore. I can go out and buy another book of stickers, but, um, you know, when you have your stash, you're like, should I use it here or should I save it for something else? Or, you know, it's just, Ooh, I like this. The little things are often the biggest things. I don't know if I'm coming out of frame here. this. I'm learning to train myself to just use your stuff. Use your stuff. Just use it. It's just going to sit there. And you're just going to collect and collect. Use your stuff. I want to put this 
Well, oh well. I don't know if I want it to stand alone or if I want to layer it. I think I kind of want things to layer like to, to just kind of cluster together. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not sure how I like that, but we're going to just stick with it because <laughs> it's kind of stuck now. Alrighty. So let's see. You know, the more that I talk, the more that I might just make crazy noises like the ones I just made. Like I heard myself back and I was thinking, what in the world was that, dude? What was that? Oh, this is so darling. So darling. Okay, I think I'm going to leave this like this. Okay, the other one was really simple. Oh, the other thing I did add is, I don't know if you can see it. Let me see. Yes, you can. Um, I've got this little pink going on here. I just took a Tombow brush pen, my Tombows, and added a little bit of color. So, let's see what I can do. I've got greens and yellows, maybe some yellow, maybe. Let's test this out somewhere. Do I have, oh, ha ha ha. No one will ever know. Ooh, I like that. Let's try that. Let us try that. And so all I did, literally, is just took my pen, my brush pen, and laid down some color. And you can use this to highlight like real important text. And I'm not like doing this in any special way. I'm just laying it down. Just coloring. Just to add another dimension to the spread. And like so many things, less is more. So don't think that you have to put down like all this stuff for it to look good. Less is more and you can always add, but it's harder to take away um, with some of this. Like once you put color down, it's there. Um, once you glue certain things down, depending on what kind of glue you're using, it's there. <laughs> so less is more, you can always add. And once you add the text, it'll be quite a full page. So you don't have to worry about laying down a hundred different elements. You can just keep it simple and keep it pushing. Okay, so I'm gonna work on a few more of these. I'm gonna speed this up and then I'll come back <laughs> and um, do a little bit more chit chat before I put some words down, okay? Oh, you know what? I totally forgot that I can use washi tape. So I was focusing so much on my little circles there. I have washi to use. So let's see what I've got here. I've got quite a collection of washi. Um, it's not quite as big as some collections that I've seen, but it is steadily growing. So I have, um, let's see if I can fit this. So I have four of these trays that are all filled up. They sit in a, um, in a case that is too big for this for the screen and then I have this craft stack so let's see if I can bring this in I have this craft stack full of washi anyway so I have lots to choose from let's see what I can find
Okay, so I had no idea that my camera had stopped in the middle of all that. Um, I had already finished, <laughs> as you can see, I have finished this spread. And um, I think I want to stop there. I do have some other things that I have to do today. And so I can't, as much as I would love to still um, continue this, I cannot. So I had already started <laughs> writing because I thought the camera was going um, and then saw that it wasn't. So I have three spreads. I have this one, I have this one, and this one, and they each kind of have their own personality, but I have kept the theme of the circles going. So these are all kind of the same circles, um, you know, of the ones that I pulled, obviously. And so they, it kind of coordinates with that, um, you know, with that element. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some text on here. I'll probably just do one page. Um, because that's all I have time for, and then I will see what it looks like in the end. Is what a finished spread looks like. Um, the only thing that I'm missing is writing down where all of this comes from. So I'm gonna pick a place. So in this one I wrote, I wrote it up here. The name of the book and then the notes from the preface and the foreword. So I'm probably going to write it here. There's a space here. There's a space here but I feel like I might put an element there like a sticker or something. Let's see where I've got it. Let me see. Let's try this one. Okay. Yeah. Mm. <gasps> I don't like it. What do you do? What do you do? Let's see. Oh, here we go, here we go. There's a space in here that's blank. Here we go, just pop it right in there. Uh, let's try again. Let's try again. Put that one, no. I'll figure it out. Not that deep. Okay, so I need to write down, where's my, oh, here it is. My micron. So this was by, Chapter one, Mark McGinnis and Gretchen Rubin. So, let's see. I think I'll write it on the element, so. Chapter one. Mark. Mm. I'm gonna fit her full name in here. 
And then over here we have chapter one. Ah! Always, not always, but often I accidentally turn P's into R's. Okay, and this is Gretchen. And we're gonna misspell Gretchen. I don't know why. Yep, Gret. I always think that there's an I in her name, in her first name. There's an I in her last name. Uh, there. there we go. Okie dokie. So that was the two articles, the first two articles in chapter one. And this was cool because um, there were bullet points in both of them. So this was building blocks of a great daily routine. And so one through five. And then she and then Gretchen Rubin talked about frequency in your work, and there are different bullet points here. And as you can see, like I messed up in here. I wrote the word sparks again from this previous bullet point, and it was supposed to be nurtures. And I messed it up twice because the first time I whited it out, I was writing the word nurtures, but I was writing it in cursive because I had just written this in cursive, and so I had to white it out twice. So like if you mess up, like don't worry about it. The other thing too that I'll just point out real quick is um, the fact that, ooh, can one of these go in here? It might be too big and it might be too close to this, but let's try it. Let's do it. There we go. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Oh, what was I saying? Let's pop this one in here too for good measure. Oh, good grief, what was I saying? Oh yes, okay. So I don't write, like I don't go through the text and then write, you know, from starting, you know, on the left and then working my way down and then starting at the right and working my way down. I pick, like I'll look at the quote or whatever I've highlighted and find the spaces that will accommodate that piece of text. Does that make sense? So, um, like I wrote this right here, that's all one piece. And then instead of continuing down the page, I wrote the next part up here because there was this white space because this was all on the yellow. And then, you know, kind of worked my way around the page. So I don't just write everything all the way down the way I would if I was just writing on a lined notebook or something. Um, so that's something else to keep in mind. And then I change out my the way I write it. So here I've got this thick all caps. And this is a Fe uh, Faber-Castell artist pen in B, in case you're wondering. And then here I've got cursive. And then up here I've got all lowercase. And then over here I'm just writing in my regular, you know, proper uppercase, lowercase. And then here I've got all uppercase. And then here I've got cursive. So I change it up just to um, add definition and to draw your eyes to the different spaces. I'm creating spaces, not just, you know, writing the text the, all the same way. So anyway, that's what I have so far. And I'm really liking this. I cannot wait to fill the next spaces. So I have got two more here prepped and ready to go for when I have got time to continue in this book. So. This is my crafty commonplace book, you guys, and um, like I said, I will have, um, I have everything linked below. I was going to say something else, but it, it just left me. Anyway, I have everything linked below. Anything that I have found online, including the books, where you can check those out if you are interested. Um, it's manage your day to day, build your routine, find your focus and sharpen your creative mind. There's actually a collection of these books. I'll have all of them linked um, so you can check them all out um, and take a look at them. And then I'll probably do some kind of update or a continuation in this book just to kind of show you. I love looking at the process videos of things like this because then it kind of gives me ideas of ways to do it myself. So I hope this was enjoyable. And I will talk to you all in the next video. Hope you all have a great rest of the day. Bye.